long cross country today, passing the 500 hour mark on this edition of Taking Off. Okay, so on this episode of Taking Off, we are going to the Atlanta area. And doing a long cross country, uh, it really began a couple days ago. I looked and saw where the client was gonna be, looked around at the different airports that I could come into. In addition to that, I reached out to some friends I knew had flown a lot in the Atlanta area to find out, you know, kind of which uh, airport might be best. So I've already gotten all my information um, over the last couple days. And so then last night, I went ahead and checked winds and conditions and made sure I'd packed my four flight so that I was ready to go. And then this at the end here, right before uh, I get out there, I'm gonna go ahead and check again, make sure that uh, winds aloft see exactly what altitude I'm gonna fly at. So that's some of the prep that goes into cross country, certainly not all the prep that I've done. So we've already, I've already pre-flighted the airplane, we're about to pull it out, and that's what we do. Yeah, this says we have 52 and I measured 52. So um, my measurement's good. So I have ver visually confirmed that fuel in there. Okay, everybody, let's go to Atlanta. Woohoo, Atlanta! Trim is set. Flaps to 10. Lights are set. Let's close windows. Okay, air conditioning off. Um, a Hicks Traffic Centurion 4620 Yankee taking the active 1 4 for a east departure. Centurion 4620 Yankee, hit Hicks taking the active 1 4 for an east departure. Hicks. Can you start with Hicks? I know, I meant to, but I forgot. Okay, nobody coming on final. Double, triple checking. Uh, people come in with no radios. Always had to look. EDM is showing that we've got 25.5 gallons remaining. We took off with 52, and it's been a lapsed time of 30 minutes. And so it's saying that we ran 25 gallons. That's 50 gallons an hour. We didn't do 50 gallons an hour. I'm a little puzzled by this right here. I'm going to wait. Yeah, fine. I'm going to wait and see what happens when we level off our climb. And, uh, and see if that adjusts. It, normally that shouldn't adjust. The required will adjust, because it's showing 25.3 remaining, 27, 28 required. That's because we're on a climb. Once we settle down, uh, that number's gonna come way down. But uh, I don't wanna cut it close, so we'll take a look at it, and I'm gonna look at uh, possible uh, earlier stops. But we had 50 gallons. I visually identified 50 gallons. Uh, that's, that, there's no way we just blew through 25 gallons in half an hour. So really, it's not, we're not cooking right. But we will err on the side of caution if that remains the same once we get out to 1,500. Now, as I recall, you were saying that you were having to run richer on the new... Yeah, but still, I was running richer. I was running at 20 gallons an hour, which means we should have used 15 gallons in a half an hour. So, boom. I mean, it's that's really odd to me. Hopefully we'll get above these. Looks like they're right at uh, 10,000 here uh, with a couple of uh, columns up above that. 
Bobo 71, forward center, loud and clear, help me. Bobo 71, okay, I uh, appreciate it. I'm not sure what uh, happened there. But thank you for your service and contact forward center on uh, 346.25. I feel like I can just reach out and touch the cloud. I want to hold it in my hand. Yeah. American 1522. Trail your fingers along. 126.5. 126.5, 7 American 1522. Well, remaining didn't change, but I did get, um, I bought us 10 gallons of, of extra, which is what I wanted. Okay. Love you. My, my personal minimum was 10 gallons. If we keep it at 10 gallons for extra, so. Forward center AC. Uh, so we required 13 gallons. 10.9 for 170. I'm okay with that. 49, forward center, climb maintain, spotable 230. Uh, notice our RPMs jumping around. That's a problem that, that has just started happening. I told the mechanic, and he thinks it's a transducer, so we're going to have to fix that. But our analog of the same is holding steady. That's the same thing as this thing jumping around. One concern I have is that we had 52 gallons visually confirmed by me, and it said 52 on our JPI. Um, and so I noticed after takeoff, about 20 some odd minutes in, that it had said we were already down to 25 gallons. And it had said in that 20 minutes of takeoff, I'd burned 25 gallons, sport 50 gallons an hour. And I was watching my flow rates, and they were not that high. So I don't know why suddenly the gauge, the JPI's dropping to 22.9 remaining. But uh, I'm running Lena Peak, which is what my mechanic said, let's try on this trip. And uh, I'm getting a little hot here, so I'm going to pull back a little bit more. So I'm running Lena Peak, and I'm going to see if we can get it. Uh, you know, that gives us a 10-gallon cushion, which is an hour. Now, uh, or a little less than an hour, but I want a 30-minute cushion minimum, and really 45 minutes is what I got to go for. Notice also the RPM jumping around. This is something that just started happening as well. Mechanic thinks it's a transducer. We're aware of it, but the analog isn't, and we're not hearing. If this was accurate, we'd be hearing the propeller do crazy things. So that's just an indicator that's, that's not correct. So our analog is working on that. see as we get closer to this next band. Looks like the tops are a little higher coming up. If we got to go up higher, I'll go to 13,500 for a half hour. Or I did, I did just in case, I brought my uh, cannulas up here, so we don't have to dig for them. So just in case, we'll go to oxygen if we need to. OK, next up, he is going to uh, probably give us a uh, a new uh, frequency to call. When he does that, once you dial it in and then repeat back to him the number. So he's going to go Centurion 4620 Yankee contact Memphis approach at 127.2 and you're going to go 127.220 Yankee. That's all you got to do. So that's the handoff, or the, you know, and you roll it in. So remember, you'd go back, or you know, the big one to the big one, and the little one, you know. Um, then, uh, so you get it changed over. And a lot of times, I'll immediately change it while I'm talking to him because I get flustered. I was like, oh, what number did he tell me? Oh, yeah, it's this number. I dialed it in so quick from when he said it. That helped me remember the number. It's like writing it down. So um, that's what I do. Okay. And then um, then you hit the transfer button. Wait, see if they're talking. If they're not, then you would say the name that he told, like Memphis Center. He may give us one more Fort Worth. I don't know. But if he says Memphis Center, oh, then you would say Memphis Center, Centurion, 4620 Yankee, your entire call sign, at 11500. And you wait for the response. Then he'll give you a, an altimeter. Officially, you should use your entire call sign and tell them really they really start really abbreviating. But I'll use it for the first, and then I used a two zero eight. Zero eight. 
ATC, contact Fort Worth Center, 123.9 or 2. 123.9 or 2, 2-0 Yankee. Two three nine or two. Good job. And then hit that button. And let's wait a minute. And full call sign at one one thousand five hundred. One one thousand five hundred. Did he say Fort Worth? I think he did. So just say Fort Worth Center, Centurion four six two zero Yankee one one thousand five hundred. Fort Worth Center, Centurion four six two zero Yankee at one one thousand five hundred. Tip of our 4620 Whiskey, Fort Worth Center, Texas Canal, two meter 3014. 3014, and that's 4620 Yankee. Uh, 4620 Yankee, um, I apologize. 4620 Yankee, Roger. I, say anything? I would have said maybe, yeah, no worries, but that's fine. <laughs> you did good. Okay, so uh, handoff is complete. Okay, so we're on the ground here in Camden, Arkansas, not too far from the DFW Metroplex. So as you saw in flight, there was a fuel issue, and the fuel issue was that I visually checked and identified that we had 52 gallons of fuel on board, which is twice as much as we needed to make it here. On climb out over DFW, after 20 some odd minutes, it was showing that I was already down 25 gallons, which, which to me is unreal. But at the same time, the computer, the JPI computer has always been accurate. So, you know, uh, I'm going to decide on the worst case and make my decisions based on that. So when we got up to cruise, I saw that I could make it to Camden and still have 10 gallons in reserve by the computer. In reality, I knew we, we probably had more, but I could live with 10. So we landed, we filled up, and here's the final. Yep, we, ended, we landed with 25 gallons on board. We used about half of what we needed. I could go all the way back if we wanted. So we had 25 gallons. So the computer, the JPI, something's, something's not cooking there, so it'll be something I'll mention to the mechanic.